Computer, begin entry. Evolutionary Files Bestiary 1. Codename, Dragon 1. Dragons don't exist. But what if they could? For centuries, dragons have captured our imaginations, sometimes as wise and benevolent creatures, sometimes as terrifying forces of nature. But could we use the power of science to create these fantastical creatures? In this analysis, we will examine the possible biology of dragons, assess the challenges associated with them, and see if we can create them. There are many kinds of dragon. The true dragon, the limbless worm, the wingless drake. But here we will analyze the wyvern. With two legs, wings instead of arms, and the power of flight, the wyvern may be the most biologically plausible of all flying dragons. We know this because several animals, bats for example, possess this basic body structure. Flight is a difficult trait to evolve. You cannot simply strap wings on something and expect it to fly. In the nearly 4 billion year old history of life on Earth, true powered flight has only evolved four times. In the insects, pterygota, birds, bats, and pterosaurs. This is due to many factors. To fly, you need strong flight muscles, a tough, lightweight skeleton, and extraordinary stamina. The wyvern possesses large wings that are clearly modified forelimbs like those of bats. It means that it likely evolved its basic wing structure from webbed limbs. In most vertebrates, a set of genes called the bone morphic protein genes make sure our digits develop separately. But these genes are less active in bats, causing their forelimbs to have webbing. At the same time, Mutations in their PRX1 make their fingertips or digits much longer than normal. We can surmise that the same happened in their evolution and use this knowledge to build our dragons. But where do dragons find the stamina to fly? The key may lie in birds. Birds have been flying for over 150 million years and nature has sculpted them to be perfect at it. In all vertebrates, a pair of genes called the calcisequestrin 1 and 2 genes are present. Our muscles work by storing and releasing ions like calcium on command, and these genes control that process. But in birds, the calcisequestrin 1, or CASQ1 for short, doesn't work. This may seem like a disadvantage, but a recent study by Christina Harley found that this actually may help them. Relying on only one gene streamlines calcium absorption and release, and their modified CASQ2 protein is actually more efficient. This makes the bird's muscles strong, but far more energy efficient. Birds also produce extra mitochondria in their flight muscles, and mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. So more mitochondria means more energy production for the flight muscles. We can use this knowledge to build strong dragons that don't get tired easily. Flight is not just about strength, it's about weight. If your body is too heavy, you cannot fly. This is called a power to weight ratio, and it is crucial to flight. There is just one problem. Dragons are massive. In almost every depiction, Dragons are seen as large, powerful creatures. If we are going to recreate these creatures for our armies, we need a solution to this problem. Fortunately, nature has already solved this. Pterodactyls were the largest flying creatures to ever exist. The largest of these was Quetzalcoatlus, with an estimated wingspan of 11 meters and weighing almost 250 kilograms. So, how do these massive creatures fly? The key lies in their bones. Like birds, they had pneumatic bones. Their bones are hollow, with multiple dense struts 
and crisscrossing structures within them. This is like how towers are built with trusts. It uses much less heavy material than a large solid structure, but remains strong. In birds, the bones are also connected to air sacs, allowing them to breathe in more air. This is how pterodactyls could get so large without needing to sacrifice the ability to fly. Speaking of breathing, fire breathing is one of the trademark characteristics of dragons. Unfortunately, there are no known animals with the ability to breathe fire. So, we will have to speculate on how fire breathing would work. It is easy to produce flammable compounds. Many plants and animals make volatile gases and oils. Dictus albus, or the gas plant, produces flammable compounds like limonene and methane, which is why they can burn like this. Eucalyptus produces eucalyptol and terpenes. Cyanobacteria produce isoprene and ethene. A gland in the dragon's mouth could easily produce these compounds or contain bacteria that make the compounds for them. Muscles around the glands could squeeze these compounds out, creating a jet of flame. Snakes have glands that produce venom. Species like the spitting cobra can even spray the contents towards their victims. So this is completely plausible. The difficulty is in igniting the fuel. There are no known organisms that have evolved to light fires. Regardless, biology is full of wonders. I believe we can devise a way to make a functional biological ignition system. Our first candidate for an ignition system is the Bombardier Beetle. Bombardier Beetles have glands that mix hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide. The reaction produces large amounts of toxic benzoquinones and scalding heat reaching 100 degrees Celsius. It is the hottest reaction animals can create. Unfortunately, this temperature is still too low to ignite most flammable compounds. If we cannot use chemistry, then we will use physics. When struck, certain substances produce hot sparks or even electricity. One such substance is pyrite. Several bacteria produce pyrite as a byproduct of reducing sulfates and reacting them with iron ions. The dragons wouldn't even need to do this themselves. If they just grew these bacteria in specialized teeth, they could make the pyrite for them. How will they concentrate the iron, however? The answer lies in beavers. Beavers and other rodents deposit iron into their teeth to reinforce them. If the dragons concentrate iron in their teeth, like beavers do, while also growing sulfur-reducing bacteria in those same teeth, they will produce pyrite-laced teeth. From there, it's just a matter of biting down or rubbing their teeth together. By grinding their pyrite-encrusted teeth together, like a medieval flint striker, the dragon could produce a hot spark, one timed perfectly with a burst of volatile compounds, to create a jet of fire. Conclusion this all brings us to an important question. Could we build a dragon? In a word, yes. With modern genetic tools, it is possible to recreate them. It would require careful planning, years of research and development, and a deep understanding of flight, metabolism, and chemistry. But it is completely plausible. After all, Nothing about this lies outside the reach of physics or biology. So that brings us to our final question. Should we? The military applications are obvious. Dragons could serve as transportation while providing cover fire, mind the pun. Also, the fear factor should not be underestimated. Seeing a fire-breathing dragon flying towards you would shake the resolve of even the strongest-willed soldier. That said, human weaponry is already extremely powerful. Unless the dragon has bulletproof skin, it would not survive modern munitions and certainly not artillery fire. If dragons were to be used in warfare, they would probably only be useful if humanity regressed technologically or in underdeveloped regions. 
it is more likely that they would be used for spectacle, something akin to Jurassic World perhaps. Frankly, releasing these creatures into the world would be disastrous, especially if they breed in large numbers. They would terrorize livestock, wildlife and civilian populations. Some kind of dependency mechanism could keep the dragons under control and they would need to be bred infertile, perhaps by making them all male. Feasibility, 6 out of 10. Research and development time, 30 to 50 years. Risk, moderate. What did you think of our analysis? Are there any powers, characters or factions that you would like us to examine? Let us know in the comments below. And to remain updated on the capabilities of your allies and foes, like and subscribe to The Grand Evolutionary.